Today I will talk about our paper, Bob, Lightweight and Automated Load Balancing for Fast Data Center Networks. Multi-rooted train topology has become a standard practice in data center because it provides multiple paths between any pair of hosts and then provide large bandwidths. ECMP is still the most popular load balancing scheme in DCN, which randomly spreads flows across available paths with a hash taken over packet header. However, ECMP balances track poorly because of hash collision and the inability to adapt to congestion. Over the last decade, there has been a line of works on designing load balancing schemes to address the problems of ECMP. One is proactive load balancer, which blindly speeds traffic onto different paths at a fixed granularity. Because of the proactive nature and stateless behavior, they are simple and easy to deploy. However, their stake and blind traffic splitting cannot adapt to traffic dynamics and network congestion, resulting in bad performance on load balancing. Therefore, a recent line of work explores a promising alternative known as reactive load balancer. They use centralized controllers, switches, or end hosts to send congestion first and then reroute packets, flows, or flow lags. Despite being promising, reactive solutions only react to congestion after traffic collisions already occur. As a result, small flows may run behind the long ones, and some links may go underutilized. Moreover, reactive solutions rely on a time-consuming parameter training task towards achieving good load balancing performance. Rather than continue down the current path and address the parameter training task, we ponder a question here. Can we learn to spread the traffic among available paths to realize proactive load balancing while being able to adapt to dynamic traffic and network conditions? We adapt to answer this question in the affirmative by investigating reinforcements learning RL. RL is an area of machine learning concerned with decision-making in a complex and uncertain environment to achieve goals. RL could be more powerful with the help of DNN, less becoming DRL. In fact, DRL has been used widely in network areas such as congestion control, flow scheduling, and resource allocation. To balance the traffic load among multiple paths, a straightforward solution is to learn per flow routing decision using DRL. Therefore, we can conduct a simple motivation experiment. We use a popular learning framework to implement per flow routing policy. We simulate two servers, one for the DRL agent, which compute routing paths every flow, and another one for generating traffic with send flow information to the agent. The link speed between the two servers is set to 10 Gbps. We record the decision latency as the time between finish sending the flow information and receiving the action. The decision latency increases include through parts, the inference time needed to go through the DNN model of the DRL agent, the transmission time for sending flow information and receiving the action over the network, 
the queuing time for waiting in the agent server for model inference scheduling. The left figure shows the breakdown of the decision latency by using a one hidden layer DNN for DIL agents and their varying flow sending rates. From this figure, we observe that the inference time is maintained about 20 milliseconds. By contrast, the crane and the transmission time grows as the sending rate increases and reaches about 300 milliseconds. By fixing the flow sending rate to 1000 FPS, the red figure shows the decision latency under different numbers of hidden layers. In this figure, the inference time increases as the number of hidden layers grows and can be up to 90 milliseconds. The crane and the transmission time is very low at the beginning. However, it grows to uh, 400 milliseconds when the DNN has six hidden layers. The reason is that a slower DIL inference process will lead to more flows accumulated and awaited at the agent server for model inference scheduling. In summary, the decision latency of per flow routing is too long, even in the case with only one traffic server. Such long latency poses big barriers for large scale deployment. The crux is that most flows in real data center traffic are short flows and could run out before their routing decisions come. This motivates our design below. This figure presents an overview of both. At a high level, it contains an offline trainer that trains a DIL agent and generates a decision tree from the trained DNN, as well as an online enforcer that deploys a decision tree agent in the central controller to optimize the link ways for guiding the unhealth spreading traffic in the network. The offline trainer uses a virtual environment to train a DIL agent. The controller hosts the DIL agent and interacts with the end host. On one hand, it receives information of flows from end host, calculates stands and reward and feed them to the DIL agent to make link with decisions. On the other hand, it sends the updated link weights to end hosts. Each end host chooses a network path for each flow based on the weights of available paths between the flow's source and the destination. After obtaining the path, we enforce the explicit routing path control using XPath. Therefore, Bob decouples a slow DIL controller from quick flow level decision making by learning to optimize link weights. Bob applies DDPJ algorithm to train DIL agent. We set the state at time step T as a set of active flows and finished flows. For active flows, it collects five tuple sent bytes. Apart from five tuple, it also collects FCT and size for finished flows. At each time step, the action is the weight of each link, according to which the end host calculates the path of each flow. Reward function is the ratio between the average throughput of two consecutive time, step, time steps. A reward larger than one means that the previous action results in a higher average throughput of the finished flows. By maximizing cumulative rewards, we can improve the average throughput of flows and also reduce the FCT.
The reason why we choose decision is because first, decision tree is lightweight, so it has less latency in computing the link width than the DNN. Second, decision tree is non-parametric, so it can represent complex policies and faithfully mimic the behaviors of the DNN. However, extracting a decision tree from DNN is a supervised learning process, so it requires a large labeled dataset. But it is impractical and the best to sample and label data manually. In response to the challenges above, we use imitation learning to faithfully transfer the DNN of the DR agent to a decision tree. First, we maintain a virtual environment same to let training the DR agent. This environment mainly receives actions from the decision tree agent, replaces them with the real data trees, and sends new states to the agent. After that, we clock the actions output by the decision tree with the help of original DNN policy. Finally, we aggregate the corrected dataset with the current one and retrain the data tree agent with cut algorithm and start the last iteration. So, by updating the dataset used for training the decision tree in each iteration, the decision tree will learn from the mistakes made by the prior with iteration. We will implement and deploy the decision tree generated by the last iteration in the central controller to make link with decisions so as to get the handhelds to spread traffic among available paths. The proposed method is finished. Next, let's see the evaluation. We create a leaf span topology in an S3 simulator with eight spans, eight leaves. Each leaf has four end hosts. And we create a controller which hosts the decision tree. We use flow generator for producing traffic based on the following two workloads. One is the web search workload, which is mix of short and long flow. The other is memcache workload, which is almost short flows. We compared both with ECMB, Lightflow, Conga, and Hermes. Here we give comparison results of average and tail FCT for all flows and short flows. For all flows, Bob is up to 45% better in the average FCT and 67% better in the tail FCT. For small flows, Bob achieves up to 89% improvement on average FCT and 97% improvement on tail FCT. Next, we evaluate the inference time of the decision tree and uh, different numbers of leaf nodes. Also, we evaluate the inference time of original DR agent. As shown in the figure, we can clear ob ob observe that the inference time of the decision tree agent is about 200 microseconds. Well, the inference time incurred by the original DR agent can be about 50,000 microseconds. The decision tree is 175 times faster than the DNN. Now, we study if Bob can convert the DNN into a decision tree faithfully. The MSE curve shows that the decision tree gradually converge with the increase of the number of iterations. Next, we investigate 
whether the trained decision trees can faithfully behave like the DNN. We measured the FCT achieved by decision trees as well as the original DNN. We can see that, compared to DNN, the decision trees incur little performance loss in average FCT. To conclude, we attempt to use DRL for load balancing in data center networks to achieve proactive load balancing while being able to adapt to dynamic traffic and the network conditions. We conduct experiments and find out the inference time of DNN is the major barrier for DIL to deploy in DCN load balancing. So we propose Bob, a lightweight and automated load balancer for fast DCN. Bob decouples the slow DIL controller from quick flow level decision making by learning to optimize link weights. Moreover, Bob offline trains a DR agent, but uh, implies imitation learning to faithfully transport DNN into a lightweight decision tree for online deployment. Okay, that's all, and thank you for the listening.